Hello and welcome to White Horse Music TV! My name is Richard Bodina and I'm co-owner of this wonderful shop with my lovely wife Michelle Bodina who's not here today, she's not holding the camera. Um, uh, microphone stand is holding the camera. So today I am doing a video for Kelly to show her a Sir B Helmut Ilner violin. And I'm holding up two violins which you might think is weird seeing I'm showing her one violin. But these two violins are both Helmut Ilner B model violins. And interestingly, I've, I've had quite a few Helmut Ilner B model violins over the time. Um, and they have all pretty much looked like this one and have been, I'll show you the varnish up close. There you go. Um, they've pretty much been a favorite of our staff in the shop. They're be very beautifully made. They're, the B model tends to be a copy of a Guarneri violin. Um, and they often come with that very nice rosewood chin rest and pegs and a rosewood tail piece. I've put a Whitner one with the four adjusters on there, but it comes with the um, rosewood tail piece, which you can keep separately if you want, or you can use that if you're someone who doesn't need the four fine tuners, but beautiful sounding, beautiful, strong sounding violin. But just recently, the last batch of Helmut Ilner violins I've got have looked very, very different. See this one? It's quite a bit shinier varnish, more sort of like transparent, shiny varnish, which really brings out the, the wood. Look at that. That is the river of dreams, that wood. That is what you call it looks very very different to this. A big part of that is just the difference in the varnish. Some varnish tends to bring out the the um, the flaminess of the wood more. So those two violins look quite different so we're we're going to compare for Kelly the old and the new. All right so I'll start with the old because that makes chronological sense. They're both currently set up with tonica strings. They actually come with dominant strings, which I don't th think suit these violins at all, but we can change them to whatever strings we like. And having the same strings on each violin makes sense. All right, I'll give this one a, a try first. So that is a very even sounding violin. It sounds deep, but not enormously deep. It sounds full on the top strings as well, but not, um, well, actually, yeah, nice and full on the top strings. And it rings across the whole violin really beautifully well and is quite powerful. So it has all of the elements that I generally like in a violin. Okay, that's violin number one, that is the old. Bringing in the new, let's see how it sounds. dissimilar but there are things that are different about each one. I would say this has a tiny incy wincy bit more depth down the bottom. It still has a similar amount of ring to the sound I would say. Um, it's the old one has a slight bit more sort of like woodiness to the sound like um, it's really difficult to describe woodiness. What, what is that? Uh, it's sort of like this, I don't know, wooden instruments have a particular sound and it sounds like that. <laughs> um, but 
This, I would say, has slightly more depth. Gosh, it would be tough to choose between those two. I'm going to have another play. What I'm going to do is I'll play each one straight after each other, and then you can decide and tell Kelly which one she should buy. Okay. So I'll just play something short. them then I, th I really enjoy the little bit of extra depth on the new one just um, I don't know I've always been like to me a violin should have depth and strength and ring and all of those things but um, depth is a really important thing if you think about you know really cheap violins often they they just you know don't have any depth and they sound thin and nasty not saying that that one does sound thin and nasty but this one just has a little bit more of that depth that i really like anyway i think um we should have a bit of a group discussion in the comments and tell kelly what she thinks thanks for watching bye